Hello, this is Dread from Apprentice's Corner. Today's video topic is going to be about McMagic's 320 Wave SSF Beastmaster. Alright, McMagic, take it away. Hey everyone, I'm McMagic. So, for this SSF Beastmaster, uh, it was built around kind of poison wolves. So we'll jump into the wolf tree first, since it's probably your most important skill the build's based around. All right, what was the most important uh, points on the skill tree for the wolves? So with wolves, you're going to want to go over and get uh, plus one maximum wolves and plus one maximum companions. There's two ways to get there, but since we're doing poison, uh, we don't care about the physical damage portion. So we just went with the bottom route, which gives your wolves some more health, health regen, and uh, health leech just to make them a little bit tankier. And then the other most important node is your safety in numbers, which lets you summon wolves up to your maximum number of companions. So to do that, we went with attack speed and move speed, some dodge, and that node. All right. And Keep going. With your uh, remaining points, you're going to want to come down this way and get damage over time, which just scales your poison damage. And then put a few more here into dodge, because this will be... The most important note for making your wolves tanky. All right. And after doing that run, is there anything you would change about it? No, I think basically all these points seem pretty mandatory. All right. Um, perfect. All right. Let's take a look at that Serpent Strike then. All right. So moving over to Serpent Strike, this will be your main attack. The main uh, purpose of Serpent Strike is for this node right here, which makes every attack give you 60 dodge, uh, and that stacks. So you'll usually have uh, between like 240 and 360 base dodge just from attacking with Serpent Strike constantly. The other nodes you're going to want to go for is this 35% attack speed, because obviously the more times you can attack in that four seconds, the more dodge you get. And then uh, just filling out the rest with uh, poison and damage over time. Ooh, that global damage over time, does that apply to your minions? I can't tell. Uh, it does not, from oh, what I understand. That's sad. Yeah, so this one is kind of nice, because it uh, um, it makes your auto attacks ranged. So, so you, you can stack some buffs from this as well when you're when on a harder difficulty wave, where you don't want to stand as close. Uh, you could still proc some of your buffs. Yeah, that's actually that's actually cool. Yeah, that's actually kind of cool because you could like proc like slow on hit with that and stuff like that. When I did my run, I did not have any of these nodes. Okay. I uh, I accidentally took these and didn't realize it. <laughs> so uh, you still made it to like three twenty. Wait, what wave did you get? You can click out. Like what wave did you get? Something. It was like three hundred something. Pretty much he's I think. he's third in place, but the second place doesn't really count because it was the primalist, and the primalist was abusing a bug, a yeah, cough, a... Hotsor. cough. It's okay. We love Hotsor. All right, let's talk about uh, leap slam. I think that's important as well for this. So for Leap Slam, uh, most of the nodes don't really matter. The most important one is probably Companions Leap with you because it allows you to kind of reposition your wolves pretty easily. Um, other than that, you want seven points in this, which gives your wolves 100% increased global damage, which is pretty nice. And then this one gives them some attack speed, or... Uh, Rage gives you attack speed, so with Serpent Strike, it lets you get your dodge back up quickly after leaping. Yeah, and if anybody doesn't understand what he's talking about, what he means by that, uh, if you've ever played PoE and if you know what the skill convocation is from the Necromancer, it's pretty much a shoe in for that because we don't really have a equivalent in this game yet. So that's pretty much like a, a second rate. Con convocation but it did really well in his like his arena run i was watching the entire way through and it was it was like saving his wolves from death literally yeah it's nice for the repositioning and wolves and then this attack speed because leap strike is actually a pretty slow skill and since so much of your protections is built into your dodge that time you're not auto attacking with serpent strike 
you're dropping your dodge. So this just helps you build it up quicker. Yeah, I I I've saw when you're uh, when you're playing, I saw that as if you don't have surf and strike up, you're fucked. I noticed yeah. that. Uh, so let's talk about the actual n- skill of the build and tangling roots, as it is the best skill for almost every single primalist on the planet. Yeah, so entangling roots is kind of insane still, even after a recent nerf. Um, the most important thing you get really two big advantages from it. The first one is the insane healing that you need to keep your wolves alive. Um, it's 50 health per second. And then the more uh, healing effectiveness, either from attunement or from other points on your passive tree, uh, just make that healing per second go way higher. And then you also want this one, which is Venomous Pack, which makes all of your wolves do 150% poison chance. Which your wolves don't have any base poison chance, so this is really important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, some of the other, most of the other nodes you can uh, play around with a bit. So like, the larger area want... is pretty good though, because like it allows your beasts to move further away from you without causing too many issues. Yeah. So larger area, um, yeah, allows you just a bit more flexibility in where you can position around your wolves, which is nice. But as you get better, I think you can start probably taking some points away from that but it's definitely good to have as you're starting to learn how to position around your wolves properly another really nice quality of life one is the buffs persist after leaving entangling roots because then you have more time to react uh, to when your wolves reposition and uh, getting the roots underneath them other than that I just usually take a mana efficiency so that you can cast it more often yeah of course so all right let me look at that skill tree here now you mean passive tree yeah of course uh so for the base passives the most important nodes i think right now are the primal medicine because they uh, allow your pets to get healed from your potion uses uh, which when you, most of your healing comes from Ritz, but when you can't be close to them on a tough wave, being able to use potions to keep them alive to buy you time is really important. Um, also, you will always want to try to be at one less potion than the max you can carry because the way the potion drop calculation works is if you're not at max potions, the game will drop more, um, which just gives you more versatility and healing. Yeah, yeah. So what? Pretty much what you're saying is you turn your wolves into alcoholics. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, what other nodes are important here? Next, we'll drop down to the druid passive tree, where you need to put at least five points in to get entangling roots, which is the main purpose. But if you put five points in this one, you get attunement which scales the healing on your root skill. Your also roots. gives you Ellie Prots, too. It also gives you Ellie Prots, uh, so, which is really nice to have. You have three points in Shaman. What are those? Um, mana so regen? Sh- yeah, so Shaman, what's nice is you get attunement and mana regen from the Shaman tree. Uh, Ritz is a pretty mana-intensive skill, so the more you can cast it, the better, because Ritz stack on top of each other, too. Oh, so okay. The, I, I so get it. So the more roots you have down at once, the better. I get it because this is like uh, where this is where this is where your skill tree was going. You just didn't finish it yet because yeah. you didn't get so to. So when I level up more, because I'm not max level, I'll be putting more points into mana regen and attunement here. All right, let's look at that sexy beastmaster tree. I know you hate it so much. So save the best for last with beastmaster. Yeah. Best my uh, ass. <laughs> so the uh, the must take n- nodes in Beastmaster are at least four points in Aspect of the Boar, Boar Heart, and then five points in the uh, buff for Aspect of the Boar. So this these two together give you 
basically 30% damage mitigation all the time. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Then after that, I like taking uh, 10 points in the Hawk Wings. Oh, wow, that that's insane. You... Wow, that's actually... Wait a second. Wait. So... Wait, increase like that increases your oh it gives you haste. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, so this one will increase your dodge by a hundred percent, your minions dodge by a hundred percent, and you get a hundred percent haste on melee attacks. That's insane. Or on hit. So uh, See, I've never played with Beastmaster before, so this is like literally the first time I've seen these, the other half, because the only half of Beastmaster I've seen was Aspect of the Boar and what nodes I have to take to get there, so. <laughs> yeah, this one's really nice because you basically have like full uptime on haste, uh, which helps you reposition around your wolves a lot. And then the increased minion dodge rating is also really strong in junction with this 80 base dodge and the dodge we're getting in the wolf tree as well yeah exactly yeah you because uh if for you you people who do not understand what he's talking about when he means minion dodge so the best way to scale tankiness for minions and the later arena runs is minion dodge because the issue is is you can get all the minion health in the world but there's just going to be certain attacks that just insta give your minions because of how infinitely arena scales so ideally dodge is really good for minions because it's a chance for you to just not take the damage in the first place which is insane when you think about it because that's like your your opponent could be dealing like millions and millions of damage but as long as you dodge enough it wouldn't matter technically so it is one of the best ways to scale minion dodge right there Go ahead. All right, so your other must-take nodes are Avian Shelter. This one gives you 50% chance, 50% glancing blow chance, and your minions 100%, or your companions 100% glancing blow. So just giving all your companions just an automatic 50% damage reduction is really useful, and it makes it so that it's easier for you to gear glancing blow yourself. You don't have to spend as much time and yeah. resources yeah that must be it. feel really good for like scaling your own shit god like yeah that that's like that that makes it really good for ssf because one of the most biggest issues in ssf is scaling your glancing blow because set glancing blow isn't as apparent because you know of course you know grinding and all that yeah so generally you'd have to get four set five glancing blows or four tier five set glancing blows. But with this one, you can get like one tier five and two tier fours to cap it. Yeah, of course. So it, fr it frees up one um, equipment slot that you can use on like a unique that you may not have been able to do before. Exactly. Yeah. And it just, it, it, it makes your, uh, it makes it so you don't even have to have set glancing glow to perfect your glancing blow. You just need like two affixes or three or whatever for glancing blow and you're perfect. Well, if you're not getting set, you still need four pieces. Well, oh, yeah, okay. Non-set glancing blow is really... Yeah, yeah, it's really terrible. I, I think it's like 13% or something. Yeah. So you I still know on the chest you get a T5s. lot. I know on the chest you get like 28% or something, but it's still a chest slot you're missing. So then we're, the rest of your damage is going to come from is uh, this Viper Fangs mixed with Rattlesnake, Rattlesnake. Uh, which gives you and your minions aspect of the viper, which is just a lot of poison chance and increased poison damage. Oh, when you so said that twice, it just oh, oh, I'm a little tired. So when you said that twice, I was like, "What, what are you snake, talking about?" Snake. Yeah, I was like, I was like, "Oh wait, <laughs> I that's the actual read the name of it." And then I read it, and I was like, <laughs> "That's such a stupid weird. name. That's such yeah. a stupid name. What the heck?" <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, I've never seen Beastmaster before, so. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. So, what does Aspect of the Viper do exactly? Uh, it gives you and your uh, companions a uh, 100% increased chance to poison and increased damage over time. Oh. And this okay. one makes it last longer and gives so you more poison effect. And I can't remember, doesn't poison give you like a benefit for stacking poison? 
or is it yes. just like so every stack of poison increases the damage of the poison like multiplicatively oh wow so that's when insane. you and your wolves are just stacking tons and tons of poison the damage gets pretty absurd wait a second wait then that makes like like what why why are all the other dots not like that that's terrible i mean that's why the other dots are so much worse than poison I know, I just realized that. That's terrible. Oh my god. Okay. Well then, that's a nice little revelation there. Alright, so for gear, what you're going to want is most likely the Ardor's Legacy Helmet. I did not have this for my solo arena run, but it gives you plus one maximum companion. So going from five wolves to six wolves, it's just a huge damage increase and... Makes it a lot easier to position around your wolves because of the nature of the because of the nature of how poisons work. The more the more poisons you're applying per second, the more like it's exponential, not just increased. Yeah. So I did a test today, and against the training dummy, the even though it was only like one more wolf, which is like fifteen percent tech of like more wolves, my damage went up by about forty percent. Yeah. That. Yeah. That's that's insane. All right, uh, so I see that you're using the Drow Sting. I know that that's required. Uh, Drow Sting's kind of nice. I happen to get it on my solo run, um, which I don't, like, the wolves do the majority of your poison damage. So if you were to just get a Talon Spear and then put suffixes on it that had more defensive stats, it'd probably be better. Oh yeah, but for it, the for the trolls in the chat, the reason why he's using a pole arm is because of the fact that Surf and Strike requires a pole arm. So yes, he cannot quite essentially use the Blake Staff. Go ahead. Yeah, so I kind of just use this so I wouldn't have to put any resources into rolling for a different stat or a different pole arm. Of course, though, you'd want a pole arm with attack speed, though, right? Yeah, I would get. The ideal pull arm would still be the Talon Spear, but I would give it attack speed, high poison chance, and then Protections. defenses for yeah. the suffixes. So that that's not even required. That's just like that yeah, was just. This convenient. thing's actually worse than it should be. It was just convenient. That's what you're saying. Yes. All right, continue. Uh, like every single build in this game, you're gonna want a hundred percent capped glancing blow. Absolutely uh, perfect. Reduces your uh, damage taken by 50%, so it's pretty much just mandatory. Other than that, on your rings, relic, and amulet, you want elemental protection per equipped item. You don't get any elemental protections really in your passive trees at all, like most classes. So you have to get as much as you possibly can. So. I prioritized getting tier 5 elemental protection on every single one of those pieces. Yeah, that's really sexy. Other than uh, that, you don't have to scale HP, right? Because like, just through leveling, you'll get up to 600 through the passive tree, right? Yeah, I don't take any... I, I don't go out of my way for HP anywhere. Alright, and uh, is so let's talk about the uniques. You, well, the Pieces of gear would be better if you could get them in idols and stuff. Wait, what? Possible upgrades. Oh. So yeah, like I said, getting the Arter's Legacy is a nice... Which you can gamble for, by the way. Another one that um, has potential in this build is this War Trail. Uh, mainly because it gives you the flat dodge, increased movement speed, and then the big thing is the gain 20 ward on dodge. Since you're always going to be sitting over 60% dodge. There's a lot of enemies that you'll get hit a lot of times in success that this will really help mitigate the risk that those enemies Like, present. think Axe Slingers. Yeah, Axe Slingers, Archers. Uh... That's pretty much it, right? In those, uh, in the things... There's a, few, uh... there's a few different types of Axe Slingers. There's yeah. some enemies that, like, will jump on you. The rats. Rats, too. Because they, yeah. they'll jump over your minion sometimes, too, and go straight for you. Just reminds me of Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> yeah. All right, and uh, what about idols? For idols right now, I basically just went for full minion so you just chance want minion to poison, chance to poison on hit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking you were getting. Yeah. yeah. And then these, I just minion poison, and then this one helped me actually cap my glancing blow. 
Yeah, I see that you're absolutely 100%. That's hilarious. And yeah, so like this thing actually helped me optimize it a little bit. But obviously you could get it better on gear, obviously. But this is SSF we're talking about, by the way, if you couldn't notice already. Yeah, so one of the idols that's really nice that I want to get eventually and play with is there's one that increases your uh, aspect of the Viper effectiveness. Oh, effective, yeah. By quite a bit. So you can basically double the effectiveness of your aspect of the Viper. And that would just like double your poison chance, right? From that, yeah. So it's yeah. another hundred percent increased. And that would give chance. you more that would give you more than the idols give you right now, right? Yeah, plus another And you could uh, go for duration as well, but that shouldn't really matter considering you're gonna be uh you're gonna be spamming surf and strike all the time anyways, so Yeah, so if you were to max out it might be fifty percent issue here. Let me check the thing. Yeah, go right ahead. I'm staying quiet because it's easier to edit it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so increased aspect of the Viper effect gives you 25% increase, which gives you uh, 25% poison chance and 25% increased damage over time because those are both parts of aspect of the Viper. So you get a hundred percent increased damage over time, and another hundred percent increased chance to poison from those. Yeah, yeah, that would be insane. And it doesn't that increase the attack speed too, since that's part of the aspect of the spider, or is that outside? I think the, the only chance? thing the aspect of the viper technically gives you is the chance to poison and okay, increased damage. Yeah. Over that time. that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, all right. With that being said, uh, any closing thoughts on it? Uh. I think that just about sums it all up. It's a definitely a fun uh, class and build to play, but definitely takes some practice in learning how to position around your wolves. The micromanaging so was high with this one, yeah, <laughs> but it's it's a lot of fun. So stick with it. Give it a give it a solid try. I'm and sure if you're you uh, looking for gameplay, uh, there will be gameplay playing in the background, and as well, there will be uh, I will be linking his Twitch vod where he did that arena run in the description down below. And I'll also be linking McMagic's Twitch stream because he streams almost daily early in the morning. What About what time? On weekdays, I'll normally stream, start streaming around 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. Eastern. And on weekends, I usually start streaming at 9 a.m. Eastern and then a second stream around one or two o'clock eastern all right and if you have any more questions uh this is just a brief overview but down in the description below there will be a link to a reddit post that me and mcmagic will make together about it'll just simply show everything you need for the build it'll be a much more detailed version with all the skill trees so you don't have to just pause through the video and such and uh with that being said uh thank you so much for coming on the youtube channel here mcmagic yeah thanks for having me of course anytime bye folks these roads are not kind to my bones i cannot do that I cannot do that. I cannot do that. I am not a man of many pockets.
I cannot do that. These roads are not kind to my bones.